What's going on, everybody? We are at the laser, and we're talking light burn cameras. Stay tuned. We're going to show you how to pick the one that you need and how to get it set up. So let's get into it. All right, so some of the first things that you need to know when you are selecting your camera is one, your bed size. So you need to know, okay, the width and the depth. So that way you can put that into Lightburn's calculator and your minimum mounting height. So basically from your open lid down to the bed. Um, I picked a spot that was pretty centered. So we'll take a look, you know, there's the camera down to the bed. It's pretty centered in the middle of the bed. And that's why I picked that spot. So I took my tape measure, measured down. It's about a thousand millimeters from there to there. Uh, bed width is just over a thousand millimeters. And then we're just over 600 millimeters in depth. So let's jump over to Lightburn and I'll show you where to go. So you can put in those measurements and select a camera. All right, so now over here at Lightburn, you're gonna jump up here to this help drop down here. And there is a camera selection help. Come into here, and here's where you get your machine size. So your width and depth, and then you can look here, and it says minimum mounting height. So what I did is actually, this is pulling from the machine. And then I come down here, and I look for my minimum mounting height. So there we go. So we're looking, I could, there's a couple of different options that I can go in here, because these are the bed sizes, and this is the minimum mounting height. So because mine was right around a thousand uh, millimeters, I actually went with uh, this guy here because I liked the width that it could see. So I actually ended up being able to see a little bit wider than my bed because my minimum is way lower than what I needed. So I've got more than I need to cover my whole bed. And I like that it was gonna be a higher resolution uh, camera because I actually went with the 120 and it's been working out really good so far. So that's how you select it. And if you actually wanted to see the camera, you can double click on that line and it'll take you right to the camera that you want to, that you want to pick. All right, so as far as installing the camera, there were some things that I did that I don't know that everybody will face this depending on the laser that you have and how you want to mount it, but let me run you through it. So we'll flip you around. And here we are at the actual camera. So what I did is I actually have a 3D printer and I 3D printed the file that is on Lightburn's website. And I got some mounting tape for the back and mounted this up. Then I actually went over to Home Depot and got some of these mounting squares. They're cable tie mounts. And then I went and I used zip ties and I ran my cable all the way here, across, and then it's just looped underneath and over to here. Over here on this other side, if I open this door, you can actually see I have a cable tie that's just down over here. This cable runs and then down into the hole with all the other cables. And I'll close that door and then we'll come down in here and show you what's going on in here. So what I had to do, and you can see the cable here is still loose. I haven't found like a permanent routing place for it, but... I have the end of the camera cable, and then this right here is an adapter, so I could actually take the thumb drive stick out of here and then plug it into here, so now it's actually connected to this flash drive port. So this is actually my camera, so now it's no longer the flash drive port, it is for the camera. And now that goes and I run it out to my computer right here. So as far as all the pieces that I got, you know, the clips, the, the adapter, the extra cable, I'll include all of that down in the description so that way you can pick it up as well and you'll have all the same things that I, I'm using because it's working. So if mine's working, then yours should work as well. One thing that I didn't mention is I did get a, a USB cable and I made sure to buy some of these uh, ferrite Oh, I can't even remember what they're called, but basically it helps reduce the interference of the cable. Um, I see often that people have, you know, communication errors and, you know, all kinds of stuff. This could potentially be the problem. If you don't have any of these ferrite um, deals there, then it could cause problems with the communication and the electrical interference. So that's what those are for. But I did get some of those 
and there was a bunch in a little pack and I just use up these ones. So, but again, everything will be down in the description so you can get it too. All right, so Lightburn does a really good job of walking you through all the steps of this. Um, so we've got our, our camera mounted already. Next, you come into Laser Tools, and you need to do both of these steps, the lens calibration and then the camera alignment. So first of all, in the lens calibration, you come in here, you pick your camera that's now showing up because it's plugged into my computer, and you pick which lens style you got, if it's a normal or if it is a fisheye lens. Uh, in here, you have the option to pick all of these different angles, like mine is the eight megapixel wide with the 120, um, but I actually opted to do none and do a full calibration. I found that this works much better, and even if you look down here and you read, it says you get better results by doing a full calibration. Um, you say next, you come in here, and then it starts going through, and you have to do captures, and you print out this paper. And you move this paper around the bed, just like it's showing you, and you make sure that you're getting good captures. Um, it can be a tedious process, and it's not perfect every time. Sometimes I had to put something behind this to, to make it work. Sometimes I had to lift it a little bit just to get it to show. Um, having the machine on and having light available also is helpful. But make sure you do it. Make sure you follow the instructions and read what it says in all these boxes to make sure that you're doing it right. So the next part of it, once you've got the good calibration and basically it scores it and it will tell you you've done a good job or not. Next thing you have to go in here and do is do the camera alignment. So with the camera alignment, it asks you which way is it mounted. This is what I'm doing right now. So then you go and you select your camera and there you go. There's your bed. You say next. It comes up with this guy here. So it does a scale. What I set mine was to 100%. So it actually right now it's saying 283%. I don't know why, but set your material thickness, fill in your fill speed, your line speed, and all of this you want to be fast um, because it's actually, it's not going to cut anything out. You don't want anything cut out, but all of the lines, it's going to score them. So you want to be a good score setting. And also for these uh, registration marks, you want it to be nice and dark. So you fill all that in. And then you can frame it on your machine. It will actually frame where it's going to go. It tries to go to the center of the bed. Um, once it is done, you will be able to pick and it will actually walk you through. I'm not going to do it because it's going to mess up my calibration. And I'm not actually set up to do it right now. But you'll be able to take a picture, zoom in, and pick where these points are. Because this will help align the camera not only to where it is on the bed, but will also change the orientation if your camera happens to be flipped different than what you're seeing on the machine. So here you can see I've done it a couple of times, just testing out, just seeing what, what got me the best results. Um, and so this is what it does. It puts out these one, two, three, four, and you pick them in the correct order as you go through Lightburn setup. Um, but you can see here's some of the results that I got. I drug my initial, my B here, and I was able to get it right in these targets, right in this target. And I set it up so it was like just off the lines here. And I got good results. Um, so this that's basically it. That's all I'm going to show you guys. Um, but I will show you um, the next piece. I actually am going to make something, use the camera to show you how aligned it really is. All right, so here we go. So one of the things that I make um, is these... Uh, their business names for watermarking basically in photos. So I'm making them out of acrylic. Um, I have a backer that's already loaded in here. And what I did is I literally, I said, update overlay. It pulled that over, put it on the bed. And now I've gone and I've drugged this over here. You can see where I've already cut out in this area. And I want to cut just below this. This is one of the reasons that I finally decided after years of having a laser to put a camera in just so that way I could try and maximize the usage on this material. Because it's not cheap, acrylic's not cheap. But, so we've got this here, we're gonna see how close it cuts. And then you can see here, we're getting pretty dang close right on those letters. So we'll cut this one out and I'll show you it run. 
And so we're going to go ahead and hit start. Let it do its thing. Look at that. That was pretty close right there. Oh, look at that. Oh, right on it. All right, so you can see that that just barely missed that. So it cut it just perfect. Um, I think it's probably a little bit off from what this is showing. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's actually probably dead on. It's pretty close. So, I yeah, I'm calling that a win. But yeah, so let's take a look. Boom, pop that out. That sucker's ready to go. Okay, so now this here is a perfect example of maximizing the space. So you can see I've cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here. And now I've got all this odd space here. So I broke this up. This is supposed to be all things sublimation LLC. And so I put all an LLC down here in this little space. This stuff's over here. You can see the bottom of the G is going to miss this. So this is a perfect example of using the camera to you know, maximize space on your material. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna hit go on this one. And we'll just highlight those and hit start. I'm gonna say that was golden. So let's go ahead, let's even, let's update the camera overlay. Look at that. You can't even really see the line because it's sitting almost exactly on it. It might be just a hair off, but I could run the camera calibration again if I needed to, but honestly, this is, this is looking pretty close. All right, and there you go. So now I've got all my pieces that I need for this project. So I can take it inside, I can put it together and get it shipped out. All right, everybody. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, I know I see the question happen a lot and I wanted to just run through what my process was. It wasn't super in depth, but it did give you the idea of how you can select the camera that you need for your machine, how to set it up and why you would use it. Granted, I tell you, you don't have to have a camera for a lot of this stuff. I have not had a camera for years. I actually had a camera and it's been sitting in a box for a year. And just recently I decided to put it up, put it together and put it in the, in the machine so we could give it a try. But you don't need it. You can use the red dot pointers that come on a lot of the machines. You can also just sight it. Um, I broke my red dot a long time ago and I just use the good old eyeball and kind of give it a look so I can see where it's going. But now I got the camera, so added benefits there. But if you liked this video, it was helpful, please like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.